The Skull of Dyer Ahamkawa was an interesting exotic that before his nerf, was used widely in both PvE and PvP for his large scale super energy that was returned to you upon kills. Depending on how many kills you get with it, you could get a full super back to back which basically made it very beneficial for all content in mind. Then the dreaded nerf of it came and basically made this S tier exotic a D tier version. Now don't get me wrong, the exotic isn't unusable and I would recommend all new players to main it if they get their hands on it, but it's just not as good as it used to be way back in the old days. But what if we could try and recreate what was lost for the exotic and make it somewhat viable again? That's what today's video is going to be, us using the Skull of Dyer Ahamkara and the Energy Converter mod to achieve what was lost to us before and in a way make the exotic viable again. It won't make it the best of the best against other more popular exotics, but it will help make it more viable. So before we move into the video, if you have a build idea that you'd like to share or you've come across something that is interesting to explore, type it down in the comment section and I'll be sure to have a look at it. Now, for the subclass, we will be using the Atonement of Chaos for precisely its Super Cataclysm and its perks Entropic Pool plus Chaos Accelerant compared to the Atonement of Hunger Tree line. Now this may sound strange to many players as using Hunger will be a lot more better for what we are trying to pull off. However, the reasoning behind this is simple, a Tumblr of Hunger Super is too fast when being used in conjunction of the Energy Converter mod. Sounds strange, but let me explain. Using the Devour perk from a Tumblr of Hunger would allow us to get a constant rotation of grenade energy and more while on the go, which pairs well with the Energy Converter mod for having our charge of lights and grenades up and ready. This, as well as the Energy Converter mod, and the Oppressive Darkness added into this means we can keep the Energy Converter mod and the Charge of Light stat as long as we are above the 50% threshold and our super is at max. The issue with this though is that A, the super is way too fast when being activated and won't allow us enough time to activate our mod the moment it connects with a target, and B, when the super connects it sticks and does continuous damage which isn't bad but you can easily miss with the super and overall mess up the strat. Now with top tree instead it's much more slower to reach its target, it can track and it can split into multiple smaller versions of itself which can yield even more super bomb kills. What you have to understand with what I'm trying to pull off from here is that for me to gain more super than normal I need to use my grenade the moment my super is about to reach its target so I can get my 50% super energy back and then more upon kills for my super but my super needs to move just slow enough for me to pull it off, which is why Bottom Tree Void, although strong in the perk section, fails to meet the criteria of what I need. It's a shame that this was the case as it would have been very powerful nonetheless, but it just doesn't hit exactly what I was after. Now, for the grenades, the Vortex grenades will be your friends as they provide the best damage, duration and best effectiveness when paired with the Oppressive Darkness mod. For weapons, you're going to need the Bad Juju Exotic and then a secondary of choice with the Demolitions perk. If you don't have the Bad Juju then it's not a problem as it leaves you open for picking a much stronger secondary and primary of choice. Heavy now falls in the same category of whatever suits you best, I would say go with something that has the reach but it's great for boss damage. With the Bad Juju in my primary, I can continuously build up my super and auto reload my weapon while getting kills with it, which I have found works really well for overall supporting the build I have going. I was originally going to use the Masterwork AR with the Demolition's perk and just rely on getting kills with it, but I realised that using the Bad Juju will be better as I'm getting more bang for my buck. Plus, it leaves me with free choosing as to what secondary I want to main as long as it has the Demolition's perk on it. However, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the Bad Juju then I would advise you to get the Norn Hunger AR with the Demo perk and then Masterwork it so you can get Orbs of Light as you go as generally any weapon that can be masked work and has a demo perk should be fine to go ahead and main in this case. For our secondary, I'm using the Marty's Retribution Grenade Launcher with Demolitionist, Field Prep and Lead from Gold as a secondary perk. As any weapon with the Demolition perk is viable for what the build is going for, I've decided to pair it with a weapon that offers me more grenades upon demand and essentially cover a lot more ground compared to other grenade launchers. That's why this weapon comes handy with the Demolitions perk and Field Prep in hand. This weapon here, when used, I can fully utilise both perks and it has great reach for taking out oncoming ads in one blast. Also, 
It's effective against many to large bosses as well as it can briefly stun them, but it's more advised you don't really go ahead and use that as much as it's best to go ahead and use something a bit more stronger against them, such as your heavy. Sadly, because I had the weapon fires and depending on the content, I may need to switch to something more controllable, as the grenade rounds from the grenade launcher when fired upon certain angles can go off into a completely different direction, something that you'll become quite familiar with when using it. For my heavy, I've chosen to use the Moss Epoch 3 with Disruption Bounds and Tracking Module. Now we all know rocket launchers aren't so great at the moment, which is why I'm hoping we see some sort of buff for them in Beyond Light, but they are still viable, just not for end game. And that's fine honestly, as the build isn't designed for end game, so we have a reason to use this weapon for whatever activity we have in mind. With the tracking and destruction rounds available on the weapon, we can utilize this heavily when against shielded enemies for a 50% kinetic damage buff for you and our allies. Although it lasts a few seconds, it's still worth investing in if you have a plan to use your kinetic a lot more often than normal. Plus, disruption rounds are a high tier perk that everyone should at least have in their weapon slot available at all times. For the stats, you're going to want to spread out your grenade and tend to stat as these two areas will be used highly within the build the most. For your discipline, hitting the 50 to 60 ranges are the ideal sweet spot that everyone should aim for, as when combined with a weapon that has the demolition's perk, there's no point of going any more higher than that. I would only recommend you go above this if you don't have a weapon with the perk or if you have an exotic that provides grenade energy as you go. Attention stats should stay at the 60 ranges as the cooldown time for it will be 4 minutes 18, which is more than enough to warrant what you're going to be doing. Plus, if you're using the bad juju, then once again, what point is there for you to build up more for this area if you have something that boosts your stats further via in game moments, such as using the bad juju? The rest of your stats should reflect upon what you consider is most important, with resilience and recovery being at the reasonable enough level for you to survive, so 50 to 60. Within your armor, you need to have this season mod slots for certain mods being used, for example, a void armor for the energy converter mod, arc armor for the swift charge mod, although this can be changed to a simple charge with light mod, and then two solar finty armors for the charged up mods. These are the main important mods you will need to have and chase for the build. Your exotic armor piece does not require a specific affinity, so you're free to pick and choose what you want. Now here are the mods we are going to be currently using, which I will go in a bit more depth afterwards. Head, Discipline and Heavy Ammo Finder mod, Arm, Resilience, Unstoppable Pulse Rifle and Supercharge mod, Chest, Resilience, Enhanced Unflinching Rifle Aim and Swift Charge mod, Leg, Discipline and Energy Converter mod, Bond, Percussive Dampener, Oppressive Darkness and Charged Up mod. With Skull of Dio Ahamkara and the use of the Energy Converter mod, plus the bad juju for support, you and everyone else who decides to use this build can easily get around 70-80% to of super energy back upon super activation and then use of our mod. Though it may not sound as great as the Shards of Gamma version with instant super, this build here does allow us to get the Skull of Dio Ahamkara back to a viable level worth using in PvE based content although there is a slight method to pulling it 100% all the time. The issue before when it comes to using the Skull Dio Amakara on its own is how low and lacking the exotic is for its payoff. Before the big nerf, it used to give a large amount of super back to the user upon a few kills, with any more allowing the user to get a full super bar back by chance, which in most wave based content or content with a large number of enemies in one area at a time, meant that you could chain your super back to back. This made the exotic very viable in a lot of content alongside the Nezrak Sin, with even its use being viable in PvP. All of that changed when the super nerf came and the Skull's exotic perk was tweaked so that there was a cap as to how much super you would get back upon kills, which overall devastated the exotic and usage with players for a very, very long time. Now though, that shouldn't be much of an issue as we have a slight way around it that's proved effective now for the exotic, but not super effective for most endgame content sadly. It's most strongest in low to mid level content where activities aren't that much heavily focused on requiring specific stats or mods for extra survival. Think of using this in content such as the menagerie, strikes, nightfalls up to 1020, and anything wave based and simple to run in. 
You can use this in the 1050 Nightfalls, although you will be required to change a few weapons up to accommodate against champions, with the same for raids for Pacific encounters. Anything then 1050 Nightfalls are doing the dungeon solo, and that's where the build comes to a halt with its effectiveness, as trying to set up everything on your end whilst pulling off all this amount of damage that's coming towards you from the enemy types isn't an easy task. And trying to pull this off with your super and your mod and using your weapon that might not be effective against a certain type of enemy and also damage resistance is, is a lot of headache basically. Please remember that in the high level content you're going to need to focus more on specific items to improve your survival in, which this build cannot offer at all. Having the oppressive darkness mod is effective, but when you need to max out your charge of light stacks, make sure your super and grenade is full, pull off your super and then time your grenade to get the bonus back, and more all in one run, you can see that this is not going to be easily achievable in such a chaotic environment. Now using this in low level content is a lot more easier as you can take your time with getting the rope of the build going, plus you can also learn how to get loads of super back upon the timing of your grenade, and this just requires you to look out on your spacing before throwing your nova bomb, and to then watch your super bar when doing it. If all of this is done correctly, which I know will happen, you can throw your grenade and get back whatever amount of charge with light stack you had, and then watch as your super bar gets more from an after effects. My final verdict on the build is that when using the correct type of content, you're going to get a lot of action out of it, with the same level of play as back when it used to be as powerful back then. Its ease of use and flexibility for content will be of much use for newer players who want to dip their toes into the endgame building while all the players will have a new optional build to add into their growing arsenal. Unfortunately, it's not reached the old glory days of OP with getting instant super back on the fly, nor is it something that's going to be able to compete against the more popular Nezrak Sin builds that we are all too comfortable with. And nonetheless, the build has made the exotic name viable again, and though the payoff may seem small to some, the build up of everything for that one moment comes out to be the best reward for all, I found. So, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.